just got into rebel-controlled Libya. The checkpoint that the rebels are controlling. They're controlling more and more and more of Libya with each passing day. We're just wondering when they're going to actually get to Tripoli. They left the army and joined the revolution. Were they worried if Gaddafi won, they would get in a lot of trouble? He's a very courageous man. Like most journalists, I'd been fascinated by Libya for a long time. While Gaddafi was in power, it was much like North Korea, a hermit-like, Stalinist, cult of personality state with an absolute dictator at its head. To get in was extremely difficult. In 2010, after years of trying, I managed to wrangle an invitation to a youth conference there. We didn't really care about the event itself but we wanted to talk to people on the street and see what was really happening inside of Libya and how it was affected by Gaddafi's brutal regime. But very shortly after we got there, we were arrested for sightseeing without our minders, put under house arrest, and repeatedly threatened with jail. Was that a knock? If they ask me why I'm shooting them, I say, like, this is evidence just in case something happens to us. Well, that's good. They'll take our fucking tapes. Evidence. Don't come here. Don't ever come here. They finally let us out on the day before we were supposed to fly, but only with two secret police minders, who wouldn't be on camera, and one youth guide, who was very, very freaky. Uh, that's uh, Mr. Colonel Gaddafi. He's our leader of this country. I believe it's 41 years he's been our president right now. Right. Colonel Gaddafi is actually kind of like my hero of Libya. I really love him a lot. And I haven't seen him do any wrong to Libya. Yes. We finally got out of Libya in November of 2010. And this was Libya only three months later in February. I didn't see Arab Spring coming, not a lot of people did. But I especially didn't see it happening in Libya because Gaddafi had such a stranglehold of fear over the country. But unlike Egypt and Tunisia, which were largely peaceful protests, Gaddafi wouldn't back down and soon began killing his own people. Then it exploded into a full-fledged revolution, with Gaddafi, his army, sub-Saharan mercenaries, and his arsenal on one side, and citizens turned rebels with whatever weapons they could find on the other. Surprisingly, Libya had become the tip of the spear of the Arab Revolution, and we had to go back to see for ourselves what was happening and to talk to the rebels who had shocked the world by opposing their dictator. So in July of 2011, at the height of the conflict, we headed to the front lines, which were located about 200 kilometers east of Tripoli in the port city of Misrata. The problem was getting to Misrata was not easy. NATO had imposed a no-fly zone over Libya as a way to help the rebels. So the only way into the country was to actually fly to Cairo in Egypt, then drive 20 hours across the Sahara Desert to the border. Once there, you had to wait for the rebels to come across and then bring you over. After that, you had to drive another 15 hours to Benghazi, the rebel capital, where, if you were lucky, you could hitchhike onto a supply boat, which was the only way in or out of Misrata. As we drove through Benghazi, it was hard to believe that this was where the revolution had started. Fishermen were still fishing, the electricity was on, people were working. It seemed amazing to me how normally people were going about their daily lives. Though the fighting here had just recently ended. But Misrata was another story. There was still heavy fighting there. It was completely surrounded by Gaddafi's troops. So the few ships the rebels could muster were the only way to supply the city. <laughs> We finally got to the port where we met Captain Ali, the harbor master, who promised to help us get on one of the rare boats into Misrata. Is this the ship? Yes, that's the one. So this ship just arrived? Yes. And now it's going to turn right around and go back? Yes. Uh, wh what are they going to load onto the ship? They are loading uh, food, uh, medical assistance. You will see it yourself. Yeah, yeah. This is the lifeline. The only lifeline to Misrata is from 
this ship yes. from Benghazi? Yes, that's, that's the only one. And is there a lot of fighting in uh, Misrata right now? Yes, right now, yes. And the rebels are trying to push towards Tripoli? We are pushing towards, not trying. Trying. We are pushing towards Tripoli. And aren't you worried for being a rebel that... Uh, no way! No. no way! Because I will not allow him to catch me alive. Yes. Either we meet in, in Tripoli or we meet in heaven. So it's either victory or death? Ah, yes. Either victory or death. There's, there, there is no other solution. No retreat, no surrender. And what do the people here think of Gaddafi? He is the father of the devil, not the son of the devil. Yeah. <laughs> the devil is ashamed of what he is doing in, right. now to Libya. We already know that he is crazy, but he never thought that he would uh, do this harm to us. Yeah. Colonel Muammar Gaddafi, or the brother leader as he likes to be called, is a textbook tyrannical dictator. In fact, he's possibly the worst despot in recent history. In his 40-year reign, he's been both ruthless and eccentric. He publicly hangs dissenters at home, and he hunts down those that escape abroad, and has been the financial supporter of pretty much every terrorist organization you can imagine. And he's actually admitted to terrorist acts like the Lockerbie bombing in 1988. And his brutal response to his own people's call for reform was so barbaric that he's recently been charged with crimes against humanity by the International Criminal Court. We will punish them. Yes. We will take them to court and put them in jail. They came to kill our kids. They came to rape our women. They came to, to vanish us from the, 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 the face of the earth. We will get rid of him, sooner or later. <laughs> and despite the fact that the boat was already overcrowded, Captain Ali was good to his word and got us on the last ferry to Misrata. to Misrada to see the sharp end of the revolution. They're going uh, to push to Tripoli. The slogan of the revolution is, our capital is Tripoli, meaning they're not going to settle for half and half. They were telling us today they're going to fight till they're dead because if they don't win, they're dead. Hello. Hello. How are you? How are you? No Gaddafi. No Gaddafi. No Gaddafi. No Gaddafi. No Gaddafi. And so you go uh, every couple of days to uh, Misrata? Yes. Yeah. Up to now, we carry uh, more than 20,000. Wow. 750 each trip. How long have you been uh, doing the trip? For uh, four months. Four months. From the beginning, you've been going back and forth. Yeah, very no very brave captain. The last time, a uh, few bombs came near yeah. the ship. Oh, yeah. yeah. When did that happen? One day ago. One day ago, yes. they bombed the, this boat. Two, uh, two days ago, yeah. bombed 800 it. meters away from the boat. Yeah. The Grad missile fell yeah. several times. Do you think there'll be more missiles when we go? There is always a risk. Yeah. Always. <laughs> So on the long boat ride from Benghazi to the front lines of Misrata, everyone was concerned with only one thing, getting back to the fight. And it didn't matter in what condition. They could have broken arms, they could have broken legs, and in some cases, they could even have missing limbs. So he was just saying that he lost his leg and he was supposed to go complete his treatment, but he snuck out of the hospital to go back to Misrata to fight. And how is it there now? Does he does he know how it is now or? And if they don't kill Qaddafi, what happens? <laughs> Though the fighting had been going on for nearly six months at this point, every rebel we met on the boat was still defiant. Even though the odds seemed so stacked against them, most were still really optimistic about their chances for victory. Yeah, 
الاحداث اللي بين كلهم بحرب بديناها سلميا لكن اجبرنا القذافي على المحاربه لكن ظل ما في القذافي ونحن مضطرين ان نحارب جاي تركوا فينا طول بالكلاش انه بال14 ونص على طول ما فيش يعني رجع على القذافي انه خلاص انه يرحل وهاون ونحن سلاحنا اخف منهم وهم سلاحهم في and even though Gaddafi's troops had a vastly superior arsenal, the rebels would fight them with anything they could find. We also spoke to a higher ranking rebel officer who was returning to the fight in Misrata about what conditions were like on the ground. Has there been fighting in Misrata recently? كان في اصابات من جرحى وبعض الذين استشهدوا في المعركه ولكن كانت الثوار قوتهم وعزيتهم عاليه جدا جود لك ثانك يو So we're arriving now in Mizrata, which is uh, completely encircled by Qaddafi's troops. They're trying to push forward to Tripoli. It's the front lines. It's very close to Tripoli. In fact, this boat is the only way in. It's the only way out. It's carrying about 300 troops, machine guns, aid. There's been heavy fighting here. Some journalists have been killed. Uh, we will never surrender. We win or we die. As we pulled into the port, there wasn't a lot of evidence of the past fighting that had gone on. There was some minor damage to a few of the port buildings. There were a couple of Mad Max style trucks with machine guns bolted on the back. But other than that, it was strangely quiet. But that quiet didn't last very long. So we just arrived in Misrata. We're hearing artillery or rocket attacks. Oh, you can see the smoke coming up there. They know the ship's arriving, so they send some missiles just to let them know we're here. Hello, guys. Hello. It's nice to see you, Ms. Rata. Thank you. How are you doing? Good. Good. How are you? Good. Thank you. Good. Driving into Misrata, it seemed like spirits were really high and the city was functioning quite well. Anyone who drove by us beeped their horns and waved excitedly. It was only when we reached the city center that we realized how immediate and devastating the battles had really been. Some of the heaviest fighting that took place in the revolution was right here on Tripoli Street, which is one of the main arteries of Misrata and connects the city to Tripoli itself. Gaddafi had ordered his troops not to surrender in Misrata, so the fighting had been particularly fierce here. His troops holed up on a high building and picked off fighters until the rebels had finally overwhelmed them. The old building manager took us inside to show us the aftermath. هذه عمارة ليبيا للتأمين شركة مساهمة ليبيا بنيت من عرق أبنائها وبنيت من عرق أبناء الشعب الليبي هذا مصيرها لم يترك شيء هذه مصراتة وهي أمام مرأة العالم هذه طلقة الدبابة من شارع طرابلس
Gaffer. Pik, pik. قبل أربع شهور كان يضرب بها المثل في ليبيا من ناحية النظافة من ناحية العمل من ناحية النظام من ناحية شركات من ناحية كل شيء والآن هي مصراتة مدمرة أمام أشباح العالم أصبحت مدينة أشباح بدل من كان يضرب بها المثل لا مرافق صحية ولا إعلامية ولا سكنية ولا صحية وأخذ منه جرحة دور العبادة لم لم تسلم منه حتى دور العبادة لم تسلم منه هذا الجامع آه موجود بحالته هذه مصراته بعد القدافي الآن آه دمار كما تشاهدون أمام أنض... أعين الجميع والآن ي... بعد أربع شهور آه لا يزال ي... يحاصرها من جميع النواحي ثلاث ثلاث محاور يحاول أن ي... يقتحمها من جميع النواحي والحمد لله على كل حال وإن شاء الله منتصرين في وينصرنا الحق في بلدنا حرة مستقلة Fighting on Tripoli Street had ended shortly before we got there, and the front lines had moved on about 20 kilometers down the road towards Tripoli itself. So to get there, we hitched a ride with a rebel driver who was running weapons to the front. يشوفه إنسان متعلم يشوفه إنسان متفقه في دينه القدافي هو يحبس ما فيش دولة في العالم اللي ما وصل فيه الأضرار متاع القدافي طائرة لكر بمشاكل هو اللي بيدعم في القاعدة في تنظيم القاعدة في أفغانستان القدافي لازم يحاكم العالم كله العالم كله يحاكم القدافي مش ليبيا بس one of the first places he was bringing weapons to was this kind of half junkyard and half post-apocalyptic weapons factory. Every kind of gun or missile launcher or any kind of weapon you could possibly imagine was affixed to a truck. And if your truck got blown up, fine. They just put your gun on a new truck and you keep fighting. And of course, anything that Gaddafi's troops left behind was put back into use as quickly as possible. And that included not only machine guns and anti-aircraft batteries, but also tanks and other heavy weaponry, like these Grad missile launching trucks that we spotted on the beach. Slow, slow, slow. Stop, stop, stop. We want to walk down and say hi. I'm not sure they're used to journalists. Well, one way to find out. Sean yeah. Smith. Sean. Sean Smith. Smith. Yeah. Sean Smith. Friend. Friends. Friends. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yes. Uh, Rocket Grad. Russian. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, Russia. 20 kilometers. These missiles shoot 20 kilometers. Uh, uh, 20 kilometers. Yeah, at Gaddafi's people. Yes. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. They stole them or took them back from, from Gaddafi's troops and they're firing them at Gaddafi's troops. And they come out here and then they make this big hole with flames. So they've been firing quite a few out of here. You can see the spent casings, okay. and they're targeting where exactly? And when we came in yesterday to the port, they fired some Grad missiles at the port. Yeah. 
And when do they fire their missiles? لا ما فيش وقت محدد للضرب لأن تحرك الجيش. قوات القذافي كتاب القذافي. يعني بتشوفهم تضرب عليهم. يقوم بصد الهجوم. هم مستعدين. They were just telling me they get their coordinates through Google, Arab Spring, Facebook, Twitter for the demonstrations, and Google if you want to bomb them. Technology at work. So you push the button? Yes. <laughs> Shoot rocket. Shoot rocket. This one's fully charged. It looks like they're using it a lot more. Fully charged and ready to go. Obama and Clinton, I want weapons. New. Uh, new. New weapons. The oldest. Yeah, you want the newest? No, Gaddafi new, Gaddafi. Gaddafi has new weapons. Yes, I want help from USA. He's asking Clinton and Obama to send more weapons so that they can go take Tripoli, so he can live his dream, which is to play for the Miami Heat basketball. Yes. Yes, he wants to come to America. The, the dream, uh, playing in the Miami Heat and Los Angeles Galaxy and uh, uh, Dallas Mavericks. The thing that struck me the most as we got closer to the front line was just how incredibly young some of these rebels were. It was pretty surreal to watch these kids, barely out of puberty, fighting and dying for this abstract concept of freedom. Abstract because real freedom was something they had never known as Gaddafi had been in power since before they were born. After long days of traveling through Libya, we were 20 kilometers outside of Misrata and closing in on the front. Our driver handed us off to other rebels who could take us the rest of the way. When we finally got to the front, they were really nervous about our camera giving away their location, and we had to limit our shots. They were obviously digging in and preparing for an attack that they told us they were expecting within the next 12 to 24 hours. Too much bomb from uh, Gaddafi. Too much bomb. But me and our group doesn't don't don't fret, you know. In fact, while we were there, they got word that a major offensive was about to start. So they advised us to leave Misrata as soon as we possibly could because they thought the offensive was going to be huge. There's uh, no ships out. We took the last ship in, so we're going to take this fishing boat. Aside from ourselves, the captain had also taken on a few rebels who were heading back to Benghazi. They saw our cameras and offered to show us some pics of their own. The boat back to Benghazi only motored about seven kilometers an hour and this afforded me a lot of time to think about what I had just seen. I had witnessed something in Libya that is usually only read about in history books. Revolution. People rising up against the tyrant and risking everything to do so. Everyone, without exception, when we asked them why they were fighting, responded the same way. And so young Libyans are risking their lives to... Only for freedom. Right. We want to be like Europe, like uh, other countries. We don't, we don't ask for much, you know? Right. Despite still being surrounded by Gaddafi's troops, everyone on board was convinced that the fall of Tripoli was just around the corner. And it turned out they were right. About a month later, that's exactly what happened. 
suddenly, after a long stalemate on August 21st, the rebels finally stormed Tripoli. Now the next few months will probably be very ugly as the rebels switch from fighting to governing, which will be problematic and filled with uncertainty. But what just happened in Libya gives me hope that indeed, we can write our own history. Oh,